the the wave action is backed off. Boy, look at this. It, the water is right up to the uh, seawall, Jen. But we don't have the wave action as much now. The wind is blowing the other way. It's still blowing on shore. Uh, I think I think we might have uh, lost Mike right there. I think it's amazing we've had a shot for as long as we had, actually, without interruption. A uh, fantastic job by his team. Now, we will talk more about the response and some of the reports coming in today. I want to uh, join now George P. Bush, who is the commissioner of the Texas General Land Office here. Mr. Bush, thanks for joining us. Um, can you tell me um, so far what the response is in terms of the re initial reports that have come in of damage from Harvey? Well, uh, we continue to get periodic reports through the State Operations Center, which is located here in Austin, Texas, where all the relevant state agencies are co-located and we receive uh, real time and information uh, up and down the coast and throughout the state. Um, thanks to your coverage, and I want to take some time to thank you and, and the, the entire Weather Channel team for the incredible reporting and the information you're putting out uh, this morning as we assess a lot of this damage. Uh, as you all have reported, uh, a lot of the emergency management teams are just getting out into uh, stricken areas. There's a lot of debris, as you can imagine, on highways. And so uh, we, it's going to take some time before we get 100 percent coverage uh, of these affected areas. Um, as you can imagine right now in the State Operations Center, right now, search and rescue continues to be uh, the focus in terms of uh, saving life and limb. Uh, that has to be the priority at this stage of the storm. Uh, thanks to your reporting, you continue to advise uh, up to 12 million Texans of the 26 million that reside in this great state that could be impacted by flooding. Uh, whether you're near the Brazos or the Colorado River, you have huge population centers, including Houston off the bayous, uh, that could be impacted by this historic flooding that we will see in the coming days. Um, so all to say that this is going to be more of a marathon versus a sprint when it comes to emergency management and responding to an, to an event like this. And uh, really appreciate the work that you are doing to uh, help us get that message out. Yeah. Yesterday, you tweeted about what a, a teamwork event this is going to have to be to respond to this. Um, who are some of the partners that you're working with, both in the public and the private sector, to, to make sure that those who need assistance get it, to make sure that the message that this situation is actually still developing, um, that that message is getting out? Well, the, the first step in this process was the president's acceptance of, the governor, of governor Abbott's uh, declaration. Um, last night, which was critical to have those federal resources. FEMA did have pre-positioned assets in Seguin, Texas, in critical areas um, that will be affected in, in the coming days so that we could get critical basic supplies. Uh, the state of Texas had pre-positioned commodity trailers um, located um, in the areas that we thought would be uh, most violently impacted in the, in the uh, Port O'Connor and Port Aransas and Corpus Christi area. Um, and, and really, that's uh, the first step of many to make sure that we have uh, basic supplies ready. Uh, our agency, along with others, Texas uh, Public Safety, uh, TDEM, Emergency Management, have all resources available um, in addition to federal resources to start uh, assessing damage and begin search and rescue uh, operations. Um, we will have the capabilities of dealing with uh, rapid water uh, rescues in addition to still water rescues, which we anticipate uh, a bigger issue that will um, affect the, the state of Texas. Um, in terms of, of funding, as I mentioned, with the, the federal government involvement, uh, that will uh, relieve that uh, stress that uh, may have been there for a lot of communities. Our role, in, in addition to uh, other agencies at the State Operations Center, will make sure that counties and municipalities will have uh, that ability to, uh, to, to rebuild their communities uh, in the coming years. Uh, you know, the good news, if there is a silver lining, is that many areas that will be affected um, have suffered historic flooding in the last two years, um, whether it was in Houston uh, the last two years or in, in central Texas closer to San Marcos. And so uh, a lot of the leadership have been prepared. Um, it looks like, based on your reporting and, and other open sources, that uh, a majority of people, a little over majority, of mandatory evacuation areas did heed those warnings, uh, which is a good sign. But, you know, as we begin these search and rescue operations, um, we continue to ask people to, to follow the local and county uh, advisories as they come forward.
All right. Commissioner George P. Bush, I appreciate your time today. And, and certainly we are um, still in the midst of this, as you know. So we'll be looking at the forecast going forward and seeing who's going to be most impacted. It's a developing situation still. We've had a landfall, yes, here, but the brunt of the system now yet comes to those who are going to be felt by the flooding. So let's talk about that with Carl Parker, who um, is, I know, watching very closely the radar trends. Carl, I've actually stepped away from the radar for a moment, but I saw that there was sort of another little outer band starting to, uh, to form just to the west of that main outer band, which yeah. has been dropping so much rain. What's happening there? Yeah, that's exactly right. We've got another one coming into Harris County right now, so we've got more rain on the way, and this is the way it's going to be for several days. You look at it on the satellite picture, and you see this massive circulation that really is not going to move. It will continue to draw moisture off the Gulf of Mexico and deposit that moisture as heavy rainfall right through the middle to end of the upcoming week. And so as we look at the radar picture, right now what we see are a couple of different components here is the center of circulation right in there that is now near Victoria not moving very much at all this is this tremendous band that has come up and across Galveston and Houston and within that you've got rainfall rates of easily two inches per hour in the high end and then you've got this next area that Jen was talking about right in there and that is now starting to come up and towards the Houston Metro we'll look at that in a moment new flash flood warning to tell you about in Victoria County. We've had six to seven inches of rain already. At least the rainfall rates are coming down somewhat here. But again, because of the duration of the event, we expect to see much more rain in this area. And then you've got this enormous flash flood warning from the Houston Metro and on South and West. Six million people within that flash flood warning. That's going until 1130. And again, there has been a little bit of a break. We've watched the heavier rain come up towards Liberty County and San Jacinto, Montgomery County. The northeast part of the metro. There you see that break that has moved up into Brazoria and Fort Bend and Harris counties. But here comes the next round now just getting into Fort Bend County. And this is the kind of thing that we're going to see over and over and over and over again, where we get rains of uh, very heavy rainfall and rounds of rain that are briefly interrupted and then more of that on the way. And then here you see the 12 hour rainfall, an enormous area, Jen, of more than three inches, as much as five to eight on the high end and again in the Houston Metro a break for now but so much more on the way it's truly staggering Jen what we're talking about in our forecast a couple of feet of rain there all across the Houston Metro when you think about what happened with Allison that was in a relatively confined area where we saw more than 15 inches of Harris mm -hmm. County now we're talking about most of the Metro getting 20 maybe 25 inches of rain I'm really really worried about how this is going to unfold there in Houston over the next few days here. Uh, agree, Carl. I feel like this is Allison, Tax Day 2015 or 2016, and also um, the uh, Memorial Day flooding as well from 2015, all sort of combined because affecting different areas of town in Houston. Of course, it's still developing, right? And we've had some very heavy rain already, though, overnight in the Victoria, Texas area, where some of the Doppler radar estimates are putting that rainfall at over 10 inches already, and it's still falling, and it's still windy. So let's check in with Brian Simons, the PIO of the Victoria County Sheriff's Office. Brian, thanks for joining us. What can you tell me about how your area has fared so far under Harvey? Well, right now we're looking at uh, that we're still experiencing hurricane force winds uh, in parts of the county with very significant rainfall. Um, some of the forecasts are, are showing up to 40 inches of rain, just kind of like what's been reporting. Um, you know, obviously that's very concerning for us because now we're, we're getting into uh, watersheds that have been inundated with storm surge. And all of that water is going to back up into our, our creeks and, and rivers. Um, the River Forecast uh, Center um, has, has, has been issuing uh, advisories for most of our creeks. Some of our creeks are going to have record flood events. Um, and they are telling us that this will be catastrophic and life-threatening um, flash flooding and flooding for these, for these creeks and, and, and our rivers. The Guadalupe River is, uh, is forecasted to crest at 32.2 feet, and that is, if that holds true, I believe it will be the, uh, the number two flood of record, um, only only behind the 1998 flood where it was 34.04 at uh, the, the uh, Guadalupe River in Victoria. 
Um, some of the things that we're we're looking at right now is um, is we've got uh, roughly 20,000 people without power here in Victoria. Um, we've got uh, our first responders are having to uh, to triage calls. Uh, based on on nature of emergency um, because of the wind, um, we're we're not able to go out and uh, ascertain what what our infrastructure damage has been uh, until the until the wind subsides enough, which uh, I believe the models are showing uh, tomorrow. Um, so this is just a very dangerous storm, um, and we're we're really trying to work hard uh, to keep our public informed and, and keep our public safe. Um, the city has issued a, uh, a a mandatory water boil. Uh, as a result of power loss. And, and Brian, I just want to ask about your residents here. Is, um, is, is everyone safe? Have you had to perform any rescues through the overnight? Have there been any injuries reported? No, no, we haven't had uh, we haven't had any injuries reported. Uh, as far as I know, I, I, there hasn't been any fatalities. We haven't had to uh, perform any rescues. I know that we had a couple of house fires uh, yesterday due to down power lines. Um, and the those were handled before the wind uh, got out of control. Um, the you know we're we're really encouraging all of our of all of our people to report down power lines, but not to report the outages. The you know the power company is is, is aware of, of who's without power. Um, but obviously, we want everybody to treat the li lines like their lives and uh, not to go near them or approach them or drive across. Um, you know, again, it's just a, you know, it's just one of those things. Our, our people here um, are they're a good community, and they they really do stick together. And uh, we we're confident that we're gonna we're gonna get this uh, that we're gonna we're gonna get through this as a community. So you didn't need to evacuate for the landfall of Harvey as a hurricane, but will there be a need to evacuate with the river rise that you're expecting on the Guadalupe? Well, we, we were under a mandatory evacuation. We issued a mandatory evacuation um, uh, late Wednesday, um, just in anticipation of, of what this was uh, what this was doing. Um, I'm sorry, it was late Thursday. But uh, the so we're we did have a mandatory evacuation. We are looking at the possibility of of what's going to happen with the the flooding. Um, you know, we're not sure that we're going to be able to get out to, to any of these areas uh, while while there's still hurricane force winds. Um, but uh, you know, it's just a, a situation that we're monitoring. We're just telling people to shelter in place and prepare prepare to to leave if they have to uh, in an emergency, but uh, to to stay where they are for now. Well, Brian Simons, uh, Simmons, excuse me. Thank you so much for your time today and, and for the information. Stay safe. Try to stay dry, which is an impossible task given the forecast that we have coming up here with just inches and feet of rain to fall in the coming days. All right, let's continue our coverage today as we watch Harvey. I'm in another rain shower right now. I still haven't had a chance to look at the radar to see where we are um, within that, that latest new band that is developing here on the outer fringe. But that's been the one to watch for some of the heaviest of rainfall. Um, you know, the rainfall overnight here, and I'm actually a little on the edge. <laughs> there's, a, there's a pavilion right here, so I'm getting some downpours coming down from that as well. Um, the rainfall overnight ranged from four or five inches to the west of town to just a couple of inches early this morning in town, and then much more on the east side of town. Um, that kind of um, difference across the Houston and other actually local areas will be, I think, the norm of this event. So, Carl, one of my biggest concerns is that when there's a lull in the weather, people will go out not realizing that, you know, there's still a lot more to come. So much more to come. I mean, this is really an unprecedented situation in a lot of ways. And here's a look at the radar. You were asking about this, Jen. You've got this little batch of rain that's now coming into downtown Houston, but uh, quite a bit more on the way. This is the model forecast showing you over the next couple of days how this thing barely moves, continuing to draw energy off the Gulf of Mexico and drawing a tremendous amount of deep tropical moisture off the Gulf of Mexico. So we've got this absolutely enormous area of heavy rain two feet plus there along I-10, the Houston Metro, and on south and westward. And these are all of the rivers that are forecast to get into major stage around the Houston Metro, all along I-10, and then down here towards Victoria, right down into Corpus as well. One of those rivers being the Guadalupe River. We were hearing about that earlier. That is going to get up into major stage here very shortly with all that rain running off. We're going to continue our coverage of Hurricane Harvey, live team coverage on the other side 
side of the break as we follow this ongoing event in Coastal Texas. insurance companies just see a house. We see the home you've worked really hard for. WeatherTech's ready-to-wash system has everything you need to clean your vehicle. It starts with a bucket that you can roll and lock to provide you with a handy seat and comes with our grit grate, mitt holder, shampoo, wash mitt, water blade, and soaker. From wheels to windshield, it's absolutely everything you need to keep your vehicle looking its best. Just add water. Go to WeatherTech.com to order today. WeatherTech, the ultimate protection for your vehicle. The game's are starting. Which one do you want to watch? Oh, how should I know? Could you help guys, me out here? What? Guys, may I? Yeah. Dish has something for this. Whoa! Oh, wow. Tennessee game's real close. Switch to that. No, 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 no. We can give you all of them. <gasps> Look. Oh, <laughs> that is great. we got to do this again tomorrow. Dish has the most college football with the SEC, Big Ten, Pac-12, and Longhorn Networks. And don't forget Sunday. Sign up now and get NFL Red Zone from NFL Network included at no extra charge. Dish, tuned in to you. Classic Hershey's. Oh. Plus cookie bits. Plus caramel. Hershey's Cookie Layer Crunch. A layered twist on a classic. 12 feet, come to a complete stop. Recalculating. In one mile, arrive at a place where you make your own lane, only to discover it has traffic jams too. Your all new compass. Well qualified current lessees of competitive vehicles get a low mileage lease on the all new 2017 Jeep Compass for $185 a month. It's been building up over decades. And through 35 years of severe weather, it's strengthened into trust. Trust in the Weather Channel. To us, nothing matters more. Every season, every storm, every time you watch, trust the Weather Channel. The reason I chose eHarmony was because, honestly, because you had to pay to be on there. And I felt like the people who were on there obviously really value a relationship. For my family, we are three for three and our siblings for getting married. Thank eHarmony for that. We've all found our best match in life. Go on eHarmony every day. Check your matches. See who's out there. Actually invest some time in the process and it will work. Stop waiting. Start communicating for free today. The following message is brought to you by Mesobook.com. People who have been diagnosed with mesothelioma have many questions. How did I get this disease? What are my treatment options? How will this affect my loved ones? You need answers, which is why we offer a free book written by medical professionals who have treated mesothelioma. Call toll-free at 1-800-300-7112 or go to Mesobook.com. When the weather turns serious, you know, the first thing I'm thinking is, how do I communicate the message very clearly to people so they understand what the risk is and how to get through this? Currently in our area, 80 degrees under fair skies. Today, a mix of clouds and sun. High 86, winds south at five to 10 miles per hour. Tonight, partly cloudy, chance of a thunderstorm. Low 66, chance of rain 30%. Sunday, heavy thunderstorms. High 81, winds north at five to 10 miles per hour. Chance of rain 80%. Here's our seven day outlook. And we have continuing coverage of Harvey, still a hurricane spinning over Texas. Now, these are some of the scenes from the overnight as it made a landfall. Port Lavaca, definitely hard hit here. This is where our Mike Seidel has been reporting from. Calhoun uh, 
Emer County Emergency Management sharing these images of the damage and the water, the water, how far it came up here. Port Lavaca had a record surge. In fact, the previous record was just over two feet, and we got over six. Then to uh, Rock, Rockport, Texas, where we ha this is pretty much ground zero when it came to Harvey and landfall, and you can see the significant damage. When you see these pictures, you probably think this looks like a tornado, and it does. To me, it looks like an EF2 tornado or maybe even greater, and I think that speaks to the magnitude of the winds. We had a Category 4 hurricane make landfall, winds of 130 miles per hour, and that's significant. That type of damage on the Saffir-Simpson scale is described as catastrophic, and I think that's some of what you saw in those pictures there from Rockford. This was the Rockport, I should say, excuse me. This, this is the first Category 4 to hit the Texas coast since Carla in 1961, so certainly um, this is not damage and not a storm that anyone there has ever uh, seen in, in quite some time at any rate. Let's talk about the rain, too. Uh, we have the rainfall that's been heavy in the Houston area off and on. We were just in a big downpour. We're in a break. But certainly the rain that we've had through the overnight and early morning has left its mark. You can see the Buffalo Bayou out here behind me. I want to take you out to that because it has been rising big time since yesterday. Significant change, maybe more than 10 feet since yesterday. But certainly just since this morning, we've noticed a big rise where it's now up over its banks. And uh, it's uh, certainly this is the type of situation around the Houston metro area, which can lead to water issues on area roadways and into yards and potentially into homes. And that's what we're concerned about with the feet of rain that is in the forecast still yet to come. All right, one area hard hit this morning has been Galveston. You have had a combination of high tide and some surge, as well as very heavy rain all happening at the same time. And that's where we find NBC News' Sarah Dolloff. Hi there. Galveston has certainly seen its share of wind and rain during this storm. The mayor is saying he's not expecting the water to go down for two to three days. He's actually issued a voluntary evacuation order for low-lying areas for the west end of Galveston. They know that it's not going to be business as usual for some time here. They've actually gone ahead and canceled school through Wednesday as they worry about uh, widespread flooding and historic rainfall. Uh, not only are the schools closed, but so is the port of Galveston. That's creating problems for cruise ships that were scheduled to return today and through the weekend. We know of about 20,000 cruise ship passengers who are currently stranded. Two ships waiting out in the ocean. Another docked in Mexico as they wait for conditions to improve and the port to reopen. Back to you. Sarah, thank you for that. Yeah, we got a, what 20,000 what people that are sitting offshore. Some of them, I think, are still in Cancun, Mexico, so they might not be in a hurry to get back. But of course, we have this expanding issue with the heavy rainfall, and it extends all the way through southeast Texas and back to the Texas Hill Country, including um, up back towards San Antonio, where we find Chris Bruin. Chris, I've been watching that back edge of the rain on the radar there. It's getting oh so close to you. What does it look like? What does the air feel like there? Is it windy at all? Yeah, it is windy and where we're at, we're all along the river walk, so we're below the actual street, so we're a little protected. So what you see behind me is a little deceiving, but we have wind sustained throughout San Antonio at 30 miles per hour, and we've been gusting over 40 at times just to our north. They've been gusting over 50 and they're in that band that you've been talking about, Jen, and that's headed in our direction. 6,000 plus people without power here in San Antonio and looking at the morning paper, Harvey arrives and boy, has it life-threatening flooding expected going forth, including here in San Antonio. We'll have more live coverage when we return. People would stare. Psoriasis does that. It was tough getting out there on stage. I wanted to be clear. I wanted it to last. So I kept on fighting. I found something that worked and keeps on working. Now they see me. See me. See if Cosentix could make a difference for you. Cosentix is proven to help people with moderate to severe plaque psoriasis find clear skin that can last. Don't use if you're allergic to Cosentix. Before starting Cosentix, you should be checked for tuberculosis. An increased risk of infections and lowered ability to fight them may occur. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, or if you've received a vaccine or plan to. If you have inflammatory bowel disease, tell your doctor if symptoms develop or worsen. Serious allergic reactions may occur. Never give up. See me. See me. Clear skin can last. Don't hold back. 
Ask your dermatologist if Cosentix can help you find clear skin that lasts. This kid makes stains like you would not believe. So when we had him, we bought one of those HE washing machines. But it took forever. Turns out it wasn't the machine, it was our detergent. So we switched to Tide Turbo Clean, and now we get way cleaner clothes, way faster. Make a mess. Oh, you make, make, mess. A mess. Make, make a mess. Make a mess. Make a big you mess. Press words. <laughs> Save time with Tide AG Turbo Clean. Its quick collapsing suds reduce rinse time and don't overwhelm your machine. So you get six times the cleaning power in half the time. Tide, America's number one detergent. Who says eating on the run means eating like teenagers who kicked over a vending machine? Is that who we are? No, no it isn't. Sabra grab and go. Hummus, pretzels, self-respect. Sabra, welcome to the unofficial meal. For a limited time, you can get this fresh, juicy Boston Market rotisserie chicken for $1.99 when you buy any family meal. Now, your next few dinners are taken care of. Boston Market. If you need help with home projects, you need to know about HomeAdvisor. It's a totally free service that matches you with trusted local home pros. You can read verified reviews and book an appointment. Go to HomeAdvisor.com. HomeAdvisor. Let's dance, Grandma. You don't let anything keep you sidelined. Come on. That's why you drink Ensure with 9 grams of protein and 26 vitamins and minerals for the strength and energy to get back to doing what you love. Ensure, always be you. When you've been making delicious natural cheese for over 100 years like Kraft has, you'll learn a lot about what people want. Honey, do we have like a super creamy cheese with taco spice already in it? Oh, thanks. Bon Appetit cheese. Okay. I love kiwis. I've always had that issue with the seeds getting under my denture. Super polygram free, it creates a seal of the dentures in my mouth. Just a few dabs is clinically proven to seal out more food particles. Try super polygram free. Clear Eyes believes every time you open your eyes, it's your moment to shine. Clear Eyes moisturizes for up to 12 hours of soothing comfort. Trust the number one eye drop and make the most of your moment. Clear Eyes. Let them see you shine. It's been building up over decades. And through 35 years of severe weather, it's strengthened into trust. Trust in the Weather Channel. To us, nothing matters more. Every season, every storm, every time you watch. Trust the Weather Channel. And as we continue our live coverage of Hurricane Harvey, we are getting some new reports and now of some storm damage. This is in the Houston metro area of Katy, Texas. So take a look at these pictures. And uh, this is really the first time I'm getting a look at this damage as well. Um, we know that the National Weather Service had issued um, upwards of 60 tornado warnings so far, and there will likely be more. And we take a look now at um, some of this damage. Uh, of course, it can't be confirmed until a survey is done but this kind of damage is not done by rain and most of that's what you've had in Katy so this must um, an apparent tornado likely cause this damage here you can see um, there's definitely a lot of debris down it looks like some metal sheeting down as well part of a fence is down as well so again this is on the west side of town where um, we've been dealing with one of that those outer bands, the outer band actually, which was the most significant one through the overnight into the early morning hours. And it was within that band that there were these, these spin-ups that kept happening and tornado warnings kept getting issued right through the overnight. It was also within that band too, that there was some tremendous rainfall. And it was not too far from there at two of the gauges in the area that I saw one report of over five inches of rain, one report of over six inches of rainfall. So no doubt in addition to that threat, that we saw in that or that damage that we saw in that picture there was the, the threat of some heavy rain and flooding as well which will be an ongoing concern as we go through through the duration of harvey harvey yes still with us and hard to believe how many more days we're going to be dealing with with it here's a look at the buffalo bayou um, by the way which is right by me um and there's some different different vantage points i'm not sure exactly where that gauge was taken but it has it has gotten gone up um, as you can see up into flood stage and up actually near record flood stage in the forecast 
as we get into uh, the next two days. Actually, it's not in flood stage yet. Sorry, my eyes went went beyond the uh, the marker, but we are forecasting into the record flood stage. All right, let's talk more with Carl. Um, and Carl, sometimes I have trouble seeing the graphics out here with the glare of the rain and the uh, the waterproofing that we have on everything, right? Which is <laughs> Ziplocs <laughs> works works well. Um, but as you watch the latest radar trends, what what are you what are you finding? Well, we are seeing that big arc that is lifting up to the northeast of Houston right now that's right in there. Big flash flood warning associated with that. Then you've got this second area, which is going to be migrating up into the Houston area. So though there is some drying in between right now, eventually that heavy, more persistent rain is going to come back into the Houston metro. And then, of course, you've got the core of the storm. There is still some wind out there as well. Wind still gusting out of 46 in Gonzales on the north side of the circulation gusting to 51 in Brazos. It's going to be very slow to ramp down. Here's a flash flood warning in Victoria where we've had six to seven inches of rain already. Very large flash flood warning now associated with that second feature that's starting to come up into the Houston metro area. Colorado, Matagorda, Wharton counties under that warning. And then another one off to the east of that. That's Harris, Liberty and Montgomery counties. And again, there is a bit of a break right now in Houston, but boy, the damage has been done all already we've gotten three to five inches of rain in parts of the western side of the metro and uh, here with a little bit of a break you've got a lot more on the way and this is the kind of thing that we're going to see for the next couple of days i want you to pay attention to the core of the storm and also this precip that comes in from the gulf of mexico watch this area how that develops and comes up into houston here we go through late tonight and then right through the early part of tomorrow so we could be talking about easily double digit rain with with that feature and then the core is still not gone by Sunday. We've still got more rain on the way going into Monday. So, I, you know, I can't think of too many times in all the years that I've been here where I've seen a forecast that included such a widespread area of 25 to 30 inches of rain there in white. That's a closer look at the Houston Metro and you're talking about truly staggering amounts of rainfall. Now, this is a blended product. This is putting all of the model forecasts together. So when you do that that tends to tamp down some of the higher amounts but still to, to see these values when you blend it, blending all the models together that's uh, incredible to see two feet of rain like that it may not happen like that ultimately it could be that there are some pockets that get a lot less but it could be that there are pockets that get a lot more and that's going to fill up those creeks going to fill up the bayous and I fear that we're going to be looking at something that is very much like Allison Allison in 2001 was actually just a remnant low caused five billion billion dollars in damage and when you look at the precip pattern you see that it was a smaller part of Harris County where we saw the really staggering amounts of rain 15 to 20 inches there in yellow even right in here this is where you got 30 to 35 and so compare that once again to what we see in the forecast for Houston a very large area much of the metro getting 20 plus inches of rain that is going to cause very serious problems in those low lying areas if you're near areas that typically flood like the bayous you've got to think seriously about what you're going to do what your plan is if there's a shelter nearby this could turn out to be very very bad indeed over the next few days here please be careful there in Houston and throughout uh, southeast Texas we want to get down to Mike Seidel who got into the edge of the eyewall uh, last night Mike and uh, those uh, wind amounts that we saw were way up there some of those values were right up there in uh, category Category four territory. Yeah, we didn't get that kind of wind here, but we had wind gusts that had to be upwards of 80 or 90 miles an hour. Uh, the wind measuring in the reporting station nearby in Port Lavaca stopped reporting about nine o'clock last night. But the damage has been done primarily from water and and the wind too. This is what we show you uh, from Hurricane Harvey right on Lavaca Bay. This is the Holiday Inn Express and Suites. It was built six years ago. It's concrete block, uh, cinder, and hardy plank, but they built this lower level. It's basically, you can see it's concrete pylons, the stilts, to keep the water out because they're right on Lavaca Bay. They didn't want to have hours, uh, or the insurance company is because the only water that got really into the hotel is some rainwater uh, through the windows. So, so they got some wet carpets. That's it. But look what happens. These are breakaway walls. So the force of the wind and the water knock these down. You can 
see all the way out to Lavaca Bay. And look at this railing here, this metal railing that I'm shaking here now on camera. Imagine the force of the wind that blew this over. Well, we had some channeling around here. This is where we were standing last night, if you were watching, and we were getting hit pretty hard. The parking lot, the water has evacuated very nicely, as the town did a couple of days ago. But you can see the debris here. And that's Lavaca Bay. The wind, instead of being northeast now, is coming around more to the south. So it's blowing the water across the bay. Uh, and the wave action has decreased tremendously. We don't have much in the way of white caps. And we'll spin around here and see some more of the debris here. Uh, some PVC piping, some wood, a couple, well, there's a pair of running shoes out there. Those are, those are, look like they're pretty nice there. And Highway 35, some traffic now up and down 35. Our producer, Michael Van, went into town. He said it wasn't too bad. Uh, there were some issues at the uh, harbor, and there was some debris down like here, but the town looks to be in pretty good shape as the wind continues to ease off, but not fast enough. The rain's still coming down, but not nearly as hard as it was uh, certainly over the past uh, 15, 16 hours. So, uh, Jen Carfagno, back to Jen, or is it Michael Bruin? I'm not sure. Nikki, help me out here. Jen? No, I'll take it, Mike. Jen I'll Carfagno, take it, Mike. down in Houston, I'll Jen? I'll take it, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I know where you're... I know, I know where you're standing, yeah. and I was here once when the water was up to the top of the volleyball net. So keep an eye. That's kind of the benchmark. If it gets yes. that high in the park, uh, that's, that's yes. a pretty significant flood. That's what they told me right when I first got here, actually, that volleyball net behind me, which, you know, I've been watching. We haven't had water come up yet. The Buffalo Bayou, you know, is running very high. But um, I think it's going to take some higher rainfall rates than we've seen already. But, yeah, that's in the forecast. So um, certainly that's a big concern. I want to take you guys out to some pictures that just came in here to the Weather Channel um, from tor apparent tornado damage in the Katy, Texas area. This actually was one mile west southwest of Katy. Just found the uh, local storm report from the National Weather Service. This happened at um, 5.20 this morning, um, and there was reports of significant damage to an RV, boat, and storage facility there. And, you know, you can see that's, that's the type of um, damage that we're seeing, some, some sheet metal um, that, is, that is down, either ripped off either walls or perhaps some of the roof. Looks like there's some railings um, that are down as well. And so, you know, you see this damage strewn about, and, you know, I think... When, when this was happening this morning, there was also some very heavy rain happening at the same time. Um, and this is often the case with these landfalling tropical systems that there are tornadoes in the outer bands. And they're usually weak little spin-ups that come up very quickly. There's often not a lot of warning. There was, I believe, a warning at this time because the Weather Service was issuing warnings throughout the morning. In fact, they issued 60 tornado warnings already with this event there just out of the Weather Service in Houston. Our continuing coverage continues after this as the rain starts to come down again in Houston. Don't let dust and allergens get between you and life's beautiful moments. Switch to Flonase Allergy Relief. Flonase outperforms the number one non-drowsy allergy pill. When we breathe in allergens, our bodies react by overproducing six key inflammatory substances that cause our symptoms. Flonase helps block six. Most allergy pills only block one, and six is greater than one. With more complete relief, you can enjoy every beautiful moment to the fullest. Flonase, six is greater than one, changes everything. Do you tell yourself, today's the day, I'm gonna lose the weight, but nothing changes? Well, today's the day. Just call Nutrisystem. I'm Brian, and I've lost 75 pounds on Nutrisystem. I'm Chris, and I lost 120 pounds on Nutrisystem. Lose 15 pounds and 7 inches overall in your first month. Lose weight fast. Money back guarantee. I got to eat my favorite food. I got to eat, and I got to eat a lot. Nutrisystem for men is the real deal with real food that gets real results. Order your 28-day program right now and get all new NutriCross. Crush bars to crush cravings, free, and one week of turbo shakes to bust that gut, free. Nutrisystem just gave me my life back. These guys are just like you. They made the call and they got the results. Lose weight, boost energy, improve your health with Nutrisystem for men. Call or go online in the next two minutes and we'll throw in FedEx shipping, free. Lose 15 pounds and 7 inches overall in your first month. Make the call now. Go online or call 877-357-DIET right now and get Nutrisystem for men with bars and shakes free. Looking for balance in your digestive system? Try Align Probiotic. For a non-stop, sweet treat goodness, hold on to your tiara kind of day. Get 24-7 digestive support with Align, the number one doctor-recommended probiotic brand, also in kids' chewables. Everybody has a flashlight, but can your flashlight do this? Or how about this? 
The Bell & Howell Tactical Flashlight can. Similar to flashlights used by elite military units, the Bell & Howell Tac Light can do things no ordinary flashlight can do. It's so bright, it can be seen up to two nautical miles away. And if that something that goes bump in the night turns out to be someone, only a tack light has a super bright strobe that can stun and disorient would-be attackers. A car battery will stop working in sub-zero temperatures, but even getting frozen in a block of ice couldn't make our tack light stop working. And it'll keep working when fully submerged in water, even 212 degree boiling water. It's tough enough to survive getting run over by a Humvee. Try that with a regular flashlight. Compact and lightweight, it goes where you go. So you can feel safe in dark places at night or just have the right light for emergency situations. And there's never been a better choice for camping, fishing, or hunting. What else? Five preset modes. It's made of high-grade aircraft aluminum. The bulb lasts 100,000 hours. I mean, there's just nothing like it on the market today. But this offer won't last long, so here's how to get yours. Tactical flashlights of this quality are selling right now for $60 or more. But Bell & Howell has slashed their price to just $19.99, and they'll even ship it to you free. Plus, every tack light comes with a lifetime guarantee. And that's not all. Order today and you can get a second tack light. Just pay a separate fee. You can get two Bell & Howell tack lights backed by a lifetime guarantee for the amazing price of just $19.99 and get free shipping. Here's how to order. To get your tack light for only $19.99 and get a second one free, call 1-800-972-6565 or go to TriTacLight.com. This offer is not available in stores. Call 1-800-972-6565, 1-800-972-6565 or order online at TriTacLight.com. Your brain is an amazing thing, but as you get older, it naturally begins to change, causing a lack of sharpness or even trouble with recall. Thankfully, the breakthrough in Prevagen helps your brain and actually improves memory. The secret is an ingredient originally discovered in jellyfish. In clinical trials, Prevagen has been shown to improve short-term memory. Prevagen, the name to remember. And we have continuing coverage of Harvey. It made a landfall as a Category 4 very close to Rockport, Texas. And what you're looking at is some of the scenes of destruction. You look at this ima these images, trees that have completely lost all of their leaves, piles of wood, pieces of houses, houses collapsed, and this is significant, destructive, catastrophic damage, quite, quite honestly, and that is indicative of Category 4. You look at this and you might think it's like a tornado, and you know, honestly, you would compare it to EF2 type damage at least on a, a tornado scale as well. So this was a Category 4 hurricane that made landfall overnight. It actually made two landfalls, um, and it had winds in excess of 130 miles per hour. We have not seen that situation on the Texas coast of Cat 4 until and since 1961, and that was Carla. All right, so continuing to follow the, the next portion of the story though and the next chapter in the story is going to be about the rainfall. There still is windy conditions out there but it's becoming uh, continuing to weaken and the winds are continuing to come down. The rain though is really just ramping up and we know with the slow movement it's moving at about two miles per hour. We know that that is going to mean a lot of rain over a very large area. Here is the latest radar right now across the area. You can see it's just to the east of town in Houston that's dealing with some of the worst of the very active weather, some of the heaviest of rain Rainfall, that it, that most outer band has had the heaviest rainfall rates and those are the ones you know when it starts raining three or four inches an hour that's when you start to worry about the threat for flooding um, and it's when that band that we that we could be seeing that all right I want to bring in Elaine Duke right now acting secretary of Homeland Security to uh, talk more about um, the response to Harvey Elaine hello to you what can you tell us about the response so far the response so far is great. We spoke with the president and the vice president this morning, also have been in contact with government, Governor Abbott, and uh, concerned about the people in the eye of the storm, but the response is going well. What's most and, important... Uh, can, you, can you talk about what some of the next steps are? Yes, the next steps 
are the next realizing step knowing that, that this yeah. storm is not over. We do, it, we do expect major rain for the next couple days, which will increase the flooding. So getting over the highest winds is not the end of the storm, and people should not be complacent. Exactly. That is the message that we have uh, certainly been trying to get out as well. Um, let's talk about you know, how um, the, the government is going to, to, uh, to position resources to be ready for this long duration event. Because certainly this isn't something that's going to be over when the rain ends. There will be a lot of cleanup that has to happen and river flooding we know can go on for weeks. Absolutely. And so we are following the lead of the government. We are there in support of the state and local officials. We have pre-positioned assets for life safety, such as medicines and water and those type of assets. And we will be deploying them as um, prioritized by the local government. Uh, we are ready. Debris removal is usually one of the first uh, areas we focus on because of the uh, that allows trucks to get in to evacuate people that may not have left and also to start restoring power. And power, we know, is going to be a significant issue. Already there is more than uh, 200 or 230,000 customers without power. Um, can you talk about the messaging that you want to get out there to people who, you know, haven't evacuated but they're home, um, they, they don't have power? What kind of message do you want to get to, you know, how they feel about what kind of response they're going to get? Well, we have to send people out when it is safe for them to be out. Again, the storm has not peaked yet in terms of flooding, so they should, if they have chosen to shelter in place, they should be prepared to uh, self-sustain until it is safe to send out the resources uh, to assist them um, with, with additional resources or to evacuate at that time. And we are expecting that um, in terms of power outages, it may take some time to, to get power back on just simply because of the weather that the crews will have to deal with in the coming days. Is there any challenge in getting additional resources into the area because of the weather? Uh, that is challenging in every one of the areas, including power. Um, we are working with the local power providers and all the other uh, private industry partners, but they do have, they cannot respond until it's safe for them to do so. Indeed. Elaine Duke, Acting Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security, thanks for joining us and thanks for the information this morning. We are following uh, the rainfall as it continues to you know, come down, not just where the circulation is, but certainly those outer bands are bringing some of the biggest rain. A lot of that happening just outside of the Houston metro, um, with one in particular, that outer band bringing in some significant rainfall as we speak. We'll have coverage. Uh, Carl Parker joins us in the morning, keeping a close watch on any tornado risk that we have in these outer bands as well. We'll be right These are the lawns. Sorry. Don't worry about it. Honey, 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 honey. At our house, we need things that are built to last. That's why we got a Subaru. Love, it's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. Get 0% APR financing for 63 months on all new 2017 Legacies. Ends August 31st. I'm really into this car, but how do I know if I'm getting a good deal? I tell True Car my zip and which car I want, and True Car shows the range of prices people in my area actually paid for the same car, so I know if I'm getting a great price. This is how car buying was always meant to be. This is True Car. It's been building up over decades. Storm after storm. And through 35 years of severe weather, it's strengthened into trust. Trust in the Weather Channel. To us, nothing matters more. We take you beyond the maps and apps, diving into the science and stories behind the storm. Every season, every storm, every time you watch. Trust the Weather Channel. Currently in our area, 82 degrees under sunny skies. Today, a mix of clouds and sun. High 86, winds south at five to 10 miles per hour. Tonight, partly cloudy.
Sunday, heavy thunderstorms. High 81. Winds north at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Chance of rain 80%. Here's our seven day outlook. Sit down and learn. Visit letstarttoday.com or talk to an agent. We're safe and sound. Let's dance, Grandma. You don't let anything keep you sidelined. Come on. That's why you drink Ensure with 9 grams of protein and 26 vitamins and minerals for the strength and energy to get back to doing what you love. Ensure, always be you. The average family's hectic home. It's raised one daredevil. Two dynamic DIY duos. And an entrepreneur named Sharon. It's witnessed 31 crashes, four food fights, and the flood of 09. It's your paradise perfected with Bear Premium Plus Low Odor Paint. The best you can buy starting under $25. Unbelievable quality. Unbeatable prices. Only at the Home Depot. It's fall, and the weekend is here. Time to leave school behind and head to nature's classroom. This season, take a closer look, shoot tighter groups, and get a pair of front row seats, because the tag in her pocket is a ticket to the most memorable moment of the year. Cabela's Great Outdoor Days Sale and Events, your one stop before the field. Save $100 on a Sig Kilo 1250 rangefinder. Shop in-store and online. Live the trucks that push you further. Ram, America's longest lasting pickups. Now get an average 11,468 in total values on the 2017 Ram 1500 Bighorn Crew Cab with a Hemi V8 engine. Look, isn't that Frank Thomas? Oh, the big hurt. More like the big hunk. <laughs> wow, Frank Thomas. Hi, how's it going? Good. You look like you could still be playing. That's what I said. Well, I am feeling stronger and leaner. So, Frank, what's your secret? I discovered Nugenics. I wish my husband did. It's easy. Just send a text. If you're a guy over 40, text 321321 and enter the word FAN to get a complimentary bottle of award-winning Nugenics, the number one selling free testosterone booster at GNC. Nugenics is a unique man-boosting formula powered by Testofen, a patented key ingredient clinically researched to help boost your free testosterone levels, to help you feel stronger, leaner, with more energy and drive, more passion, too. Here, try a bottle. And trust me, she'll like it too. Text 321321 and enter FAN to get a complimentary bottle of Nugenix. Samples are not available in stores, so text 321321 and enter FAN. When the weather turns serious, you know, the first thing I'm thinking is, how do I communicate the message very clearly to people so they understand what the risk is and how to get through this? Continuing coverage of Harvey here on the Weather Channel. I'm meteorologist Jen Carfagno. I'm live in Houston covering the flooding aspect of this storm, which actually will be very widespread beyond, of course, just Houston, beyond where the landfall was made, you know, extending out to San Antonio and Austin and all the way up into southwestern Louisiana. Flooding is going to be a huge concern. There's uh, anticipation of a huge response needed to help those affected by this storm. So let's talk with the American Red Cross. I want to bring in Mary Jane Mudd to talk more 
more about what the Red Cross is doing and where you guys are setting up for Harvey. So, um, Mary Jane, thanks for joining me. Um, first, um, where are you and have you set up shelters? Well, I'd like to tell you I'm having a little trouble hearing you, So, but I will tell you where I am right now. I am in the Disaster Operations Center in Houston where hundreds of volunteers have come in over the last couple of days, people from all over the country flying from sunny places into the eye of the storm to help other people. And uh, it is quite an operation, but we're here to help. And I don't know if you can hear me or not, Mary Jane, but I actually had a couple of those folks on my flight from Atlanta into Houston, uh, from my flight from Atlanta into Houston to help with the operations. So obviously there's a central operation. Have you had the need to open up any shelters just yet? Absolutely. In fact, uh, last night, 1,400 people stayed in 24 Red Cross and community shelters up and down the Texas Gulf Coast. And uh, we're definitely, some of them are, are open right there now in Houston, where I live. And we're just, it's a fluid situation, truly. Stand by and open. And we've got those on our website so people can find out where they can go to get help. Um, in, in terms of needing um, not necessarily shelter, but you know, needing food and uh, needing to clean after flooding happens, what about those kinds of needs? Does the Red Cross also help with that? Yes, we absolutely do. In fact, the American Red Cross prepares for events like this, unfortunate weather events, all year long. And so all year we have partners that we work with who we know we're going to call immediately when we see something like this coming. So in our shelters, as well as in neighborhoods, as our emergency response vehicles go into flooded neighborhoods, we provide 